Wow, guys, let me just tell you something. I had a pretty rough week, okay? Dealing with the Robocop remake and dealing with the Sorority Row remake by watching that piece of shit. Um, I have to recover, and to recover, I have to do a good-ass movie review. Okay? So, yeah, this is Derek Yasha, and today I'm going to review The Godfather and more. So, let's get into it, alright? The Godfather. What is this movie about in the story, alright? So, The Godfather, The Dawn, uh, Vito, basically has um a lot of trouble uh and the war is going on basically uh with different mobs okay and michael corleone comes back home and basically he uh fought in the war and he was a war hero so basically what uh vito wants him to do is basically to become a don and this and that and Michael does not want to do that. Uh, what happens is, of course, the second assassination that uh, Vito got shot and basically um, he passes away and then uh, it's up to Michael Corleone to become a Don, basically. Um, a little bit of spoilers, I'm sorry for that, but... Uh, the story is really good here. Um, what I could say is um, I really uh, like it, alright? And I give it a fine A and a hell fucking yeah, dog, alright? So, the acting. The acting, of course, by Marlon Brando as uh, Vito. Um, I thought he did a pretty good job. Not a great job. Not a great job. Not the best job, that's what I'm trying to say. Not the best job. Not the best performance. He was decent, okay? Um, Al Pacino as Michael Corleone. Um, he did a phenomenal job, not gonna even lie. As you really felt for him when he came home from the war and now he's gotta deal with this. And also, um, James Ken as Sonny. And James Caan was really fucking good in this movie, not gonna even lie. And Sonny is my favorite character. And that's the fact that he reminded me of Roland from March and Awakens Romance. The whole deal where Roland got uh, taken in by Phantom. Yeah, well, Sonny got taken in by Vito. So, yeah. Um, so I give the acting... Um, the hell fucking yeah, dog. Alright, so let's get into the writing. As the movie goes on from point A to point B to point C. Um, I really like point B's perspective in the movie. I shall say because it was really fucking good, okay? That's when the movie really gets good. Because the start of the movie is just about the wedding, okay? And point B... It, it's just better overall, and then point C is satisfying, so I give it a hell fucking yeah, dog, for real, alright? Um, so the writing is good. The dialogue, uh, spoken by characters, really good here, hell fucking yeah, dog, alright? Uh, the cinematography and the visuals look really good for this movie, and some parts when they show like, uh, water fountains, or buildings, or landscapes, it looks phenomenal, it looks really good, and especially when, uh, Michael goes overseas, basically, into a different country, and those shots is really beautiful, and, and that location, um, okay, um, moving on, uh, the music, of course, the music is really good, the score, and I really like the score, okay, I really fucking do, and, yeah, it's really good, and overall, the movie itself 
the movie gets a 5 out of 5. Hell fucking yeah, dog. You gotta go watch this movie now. And I gotta say, this is the best Godfather movie ever made. No lie, because 2 was okay, and then 3 is second best. But let's move on to 2. Why not? If I could ever put this fucking DVD back in the fucking case. Cow damn it, go back in there. Okay, good. Okay, so let's get out to Godfather Part 2. I'm just going to have to be honest with you. I did not really care for The Godfather 2. I found it to be okay. Alright, so anyways, uh, what the movie is about in the story. Basically, it's two stories, alright? A story that takes place in the present, and then another story that takes place in the past, how uh, Vito became a Don, a Godfather, okay? And... In the present, of course, Michael Corleon is trying to clear his name and stuff like that. I didn't really care. But the story here, the story is okay. Alright. Uh, the acting, of course. Um, I would have to give um, Robert De Niro um, a really good job because he did good as uh, Vito. Alright. Um, Al Pacino, again, um, basically... Um, he was good, okay, he was good, he wasn't, um, nothing to run home about, but he was good, okay, um, everyone else was fine, okay, so the acting was good by Robert De Niro, but everyone else did okay, alright, um, the writing, the writing I felt suffered because it's trying to tell two stories in one movie. And I don't really like when a movie takes place in the present and then goes back to the past to tell the past story. I didn't really like that at all. I felt that that made the movie more weak than it actually was, okay? So, yeah, the writing is okay, alright? Um, the dialogue is okay, it's a bit choppy, alright. The cinematography and the visuals still look pretty damn good, I'll give it that. I'll give it a hell fucking yeah, dog, alright. And the music is still good, and I give it a hell fucking yeah, dog. And overall, the movie itself, I would say watch it when it's a rainy day or your car is stuck in the shop. Alright, um, I give the movie a 3 out of 5, yeah, it was watchable, but I would just say, um, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it, okay? So, let's fucking move on to The Godfather 3, oops, sorry about that, so I guess it's my fault, but whatever, who fucking cares? Anyways, The Godfather Part 3. Um, what is the movie about in the story? Um, basically, Michael Corleone um, basically is uh, trying to do good now and stuff like that. <sighs> it's been so long since I ever watched this movie, okay? Forgive me, alright? And plus, there's better reviewers out there than me. If you want, go watch their review on The Godfather Part 3, but, um, I gotta say, the story is really good here, and it's phenomenal, just like Part 1 is, alright, really fucking good, alright, the acting course by Al Pacino, uh, was done really well, everyone else did a good job except for Francis Ford Coppola's daughter, okay, she was horrible in this shit. Seriously. She she was fucking atrocious. Like, I don't know why he put her in the fucking movie. He should have got somebody else. Yes, I know originally it was supposed to be Winona Ryder's part. But hell, he could have got fucking someone else other than his daughter. Okay? Francis Ford... I forgive you, but not for putting your daughter in the fucking movie. Okay? 
your daughter does not know how to fucking act. But still, um, for everyone else, I give the fucking acting a hell fucking yeah, dog. Alright? So let's move on to the writing. Uh, the writing as the movie goes from point A to point B to point C. I liked it point A, I liked it point B, and I liked it point C. I liked it all, basically. Okay? Um, the dialogue. The dialogue was okay. Um, the cinematography and the visuals were decent. Okay, they were decent, but... Not as good as 1 and 2, because 1 and 2 had some really good shots, okay? But still, this movie had a good story and good acting a little bit. But it just suffered with the cinematography a little bit. Um, I think it was the music. The music... Um, wasn't as powerful here as in 1 and 2. But I'll give it this. It was decent, alright? But still, overall, the movie itself. Uh, second best sequel uh, ever made. Just saying, though. Right next to The Godfather Part 1. Yeah. And this was the last good fucking movie. Okay. We don't know if there's going to be a fucking remake or not, but anyways, I give the movie a 5 out of 5, and the hell fucking yeah, dog, alright? So, um, let's get into another thing, okay, which is... The Horror of Dracula, yeah, alright? So anyways, what The Horror of Dracula is about in the story... Alright, so basically, uh, John, Jonathan Hawker uh, goes over to Dracula's castle because he's a journalist, basically. And he wants to get info on Dracula. So what Dracula does is basically um, bite him, or maybe it was the female that bites him, one of the brides. And basically turns him into a vampire and... Of course, that, uh, I think it was Arthur Homewood that went over there. Yeah, and pretty much killed Jonathan Hawker and then tried to kill Dracula and stuff like that. So, yeah. If you want, go watch somebody else's review, okay? It's been a couple of weeks since I watched a fucking movie. What do you want from me? Okay, but, um, anyways, the story was good here, alright? The acting course by Christopher Lee was fucking phenomenal, but does it beat Gary Oldman's Dracula? No, of course not, alright? But, I would say Christopher Lee is, uh, a good Dracula, okay? Um, everyone else was okay, alright? Um, the writing. The writing was basically okay. The dialogue was okay. The cinematography and the visuals was okay. Um the music the music was nothing to run home about. And I would just say the movie gets a three out of five. It was enjoyable, okay, but um we're gonna go on to the next one. And that of course is Dracula <clears throat> Excuse me. Dracula AD 1972. Alright. So, basically, um, what the movie is about and the story. Alright. Um, it takes place in 1972. Well, the first five minutes takes place in 1872. So, yeah. Just like um, a couple of decades later. Of course, that um, Alucard Jr., as he calls himself, uh, basically uh, tells these people to come with him to the house, and basically he brings Dracula to life. And of course, that uh, you got uh, Jessica uh, Van Helsing, okay, or Jessica Helsing, my mistake, I'm sorry. 
Um, basically, what Dracula wants to fucking do is uh, make Jessica into a vampire, and of course, it's up to uh, Van Helsing to stop him. All right. So the story was really good here. All right, and I really fucking enjoyed uh, this movie. All right. So the story gets a hell fucking yeah, dog. All right. Um, the acting, of course, by Christopher Lee and everyone did a really good fucking job in this movie. What could I fucking say? Okay. Um, the writing, the writing was really good here. But point B's writing when the movie took place in 1972. All right. I really, I really like that. And plus, plus. Where are you going to see Dracula in the 70s? The 70s was fucking awesome, dude. For real. Like, that kicked some fucking ass. And, of course, that the women was beautiful, too. Uh, the dialogue spoken by characters is really good. The cinematography and the visuals is uh, good. Okay. And I like some of the shots. Okay, I really do like some of the shots. And the music is basically like your disco or funk or whatever. That kind of music, okay? Um... Yeah, the music was, was really fucking good in here. And overall, the movie itself, this is a really good fucking movie. Okay, really. It's a really good fucking movie. I enjoyed the shit out of it. No, I was not high when I watched it, okay? Yeah, this movie is a good time waster, alright? And I would say, I want to fucking go watch it again. Alright, really, I'm gonna go watch it the fuck again. The movie gets 5 out of 5, alright? And overall, the review was okay, and I am out! Peace.